A 19-year-old Radcliffe sophomore is quoted by Newsweek magazine as saying that she had plenty of sex experience, and here's what she said. If I had to do it over again, I wouldn't go all the way. What everyone says about it being wrong is true. I feel guilty. And young people today, jaded and satiated with so much, with moral freedom, such as no generation ever had, is not happy about it. They have guilt complexes. They have all sorts of troubles in their mind, and thousands of them find themselves going to a psychiatrist. Now, what is the attitude of the church? Even some churchmen are taking strange positions. Time magazine says clergymen are no longer shaking their fingers because young people give in to natural biological urges and experiment a little bit. In fact, one man in England, Dr. Williams, the dean of Trinity College at Cambridge University, talking about an immoral act between a sailor and a prostitute in a motion picture, says, what is seen is an act of charity which proclaims the glory of God. The young man goes away deeper and fuller person than when he came in. And then talking about another illicit affair, he says, and the proper response is the glory to God in the highest. And a bishop in the Church of England writing in his book about Lady Chatterley's lover said it was a kind of holy communion. May God help us. Tonight, I don't want to quote the sociologist or the psychiatrist. I want to go to the Bible. What does the Bible have to say about this morality in the country? The seventh commandment says, Thou shalt not commit immorality. God put a safeguard around marriage. And God said, Sex within the bonds of matrimony is pure and holy and wonderful. And the greatest act between two individuals who love in marriage and it's for the propagation of the race. But outside of marriage, the Bible teaches that this is one of the worst, the most heinous, the most deadly of sins. And I want to tell you tonight what God says about it. Thou shalt not commit immorality. And Jesus explaining that seventh commandment went even further. Jesus said, even if you have lust in your heart, you've already broken the seventh commandment. Jesus said, your thoughts, your intents are going to be judged in the sight of God at the judgment as much as the act itself. The Bible teaches it's a sin against God the Father. The Bible teaches it's a sin against God the Son because you're bought with a price. The Bible teaches it is a sin against the Holy Spirit because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches that this sin causes a person to steal. You steal something that doesn't belong to you from another person. The Bible teaches that a man that commits this sin resembles an animal in the sight of God. The Bible teaches that this sin is destructive to the body. The Bible teaches that this sin sears the mind, it affects the mind. And psychologists are now telling us that you never forget the first experience you had. And later in life when you get married and you're in the arms of your loved one, your mind is filled with that first sinful act. And it helps destroy happiness in marriage. There are some psychologists that think there cannot be the depth of love. And certainly the Bible teaches there cannot be the spiritual love between two individuals if they have broken 
this commandment before marriage. The Bible teaches that this sin hardens the heart more than any other sin. Hosea the prophet said, lust takes away the heart. There is no sin that will harden your heart against God more than this sin. There is no sin that will destroy your relationship to your God like this sin. The Bible teaches that this sin also damns the soul. 1 Corinthians 6 says, Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor effeminate shall enter into the kingdom of God unless you have repented of your sin and received Christ as Savior and had your sin washed away in His blood. You cannot possibly get into the kingdom of God, the Bible says. The Bible says that this sin also becomes a master in your life to whom you yield yourselves. The servants you are. Jesus talked about being a servant of sin. And many of you tonight are servants of sin. You've committed this sin so often that it's already lost its pleasure and its kick. The keen edge is gone. But you find yourself in bondage. You're captured by it. You're captured by the lustful thinking. You're captured by the evil daydreaming. You're captured by some affair. And you find yourself a servant. You'd like to break. You'd like to break the ropes and chains and fetters that bind you. But you can't do it. And the Bible says this sin is abhorred of God. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He who is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. The Bible says that God gives up those people to a reprobate mind three times in the first chapter of Romans. The scripture says God gave them up. And it was on this sin that he was talking about. God gave them up. The Bible talks about Ephraim. Ephraim is joined to his idols. Let him alone. In other words, there are some people that God leaves alone. And for a man that God leaves alone, there is no hope. I tell you young people tonight, this is a dangerous thing you are trifling with.